it's that cooking day i'm so excited because fantastic recipes are up in here i have fantastic things to make and yeah i'm starting pretty early today because i'm starting at 3 p.m despite the fact that i've been home all day i just had some businesses to do earlier so i'm done and now i i'm very confident i'll be done within a good amount of time yes so i'm so glad that you are here let me tell you the recipes that i'm about to make today so all the vegetables that we need to chop are here um i'm not cooking with avocados <laughs> i'm but i'm being impatient for the lights to be switched on because i'm feeling like the rush of time but i believe you can see yeah then we have the mint here by the way i don't know what i'm doing with this mint i'll figure something out the celery has been washed just waiting to be chopped and then we have this all oh, lights are coming on we have this ones and this ones and also this ones down here <laughs> I have ginger and garlic. I'll start by making that paste. Some leeks. And down here we have the broccoli. Uh, the courgettes are here. Our sweet help has already started on the carrots. So we're not doing badly. Um, over here we have tea for the chef. And the chef's cameraman. And then also we have... Okay, we have already boiled. Let me move this so you can see. So we've already boiled most of, no, all of the lentils. So we're a bit organized. So here we have, uh, we have, we have what? Njahe. I don't know what njahes are called in Igrish. Those who know can let us know. Those who know can let us know. Here we have butter beans. I have missed cooking this. And more butter beans here. And here we have beans, regular beans. Okay. So three types of beans today. I forgot to buy lentils. Hmm. See my life. Oh. Can you imagine that we've only just now put our beef st our stock to start boiling? But I'm guessing by the time I finish, I finish cutting everything, we'll have a bit of stock going. The rest of my meat have been thawing here. So you'll see them as the day progresses. Now let me start. For real, for real. So as I said, I'm making beans in bacon as always. I'm making butter beans in sausage and I'm also making jahe. So you don't know how to make it yet. And then I'm going to make some meatballs. I have some beef stew and some chicken teriyaki. Looking forward to that. But first things first is I'm having a cup of coffee because I need the energy. And now I want to start chopping up the things so that when I start cooking, it's like boom, faster, faster. Okay, let's do this. On days when I'm feeling rushed with the batch cooking, I'm really, especially on those days, I'm especially grateful that I have a food processor and that I have a blender because they make preparations so much faster. And of course that I have a health. <laughs> She's way better than a processor and a blender, I can assure you. So the preparations of the ingredients goes a whole lot faster. And oh my gosh, have you seen those terrible courgettes? what like every time i'm cutting courgettes i first have to cut one straight through the middle because sometimes you find some nasty surprises in there Ugh. every time i'm i'm cooking like doing a major batch cooking like this is when it really hits me like oh my gosh we need chickens in this house <laughs> because there's normally so many food scraps and yes a lot of you guys tell me that I should make a compost. Okay, I just think it's easier to keep chickens, you guys. So, because <laughs> I'm like, when I think about having a compost pit, I just think smell, stench, going to turn those things over, flies and whatnot. I don't know if that is a realistic expectation of compost, but I think chickens would be better. And yes, I know chickens come with their own smell and stench and flies, but <laughs> they also come with eggs, you know? So, uh, where, right now where we have reached that project is we are in the process of just looking for house designs, chicken coop designs, depending on the space that we have and the number of chickens that we have. One day I'm thinking, oh, I think just five will be enough. Then I'm like, 
you can keep five, you can keep 50, you know, and then I'm just always back and forth thing. I don't know. Should we let them free range? Should we love? If you have any idea, please let me know down below what to do about chickens. I know we need some. I determined to get some, but I'm just very, very green. So now it's time for me to start my first meal. I've just basically been doing a lot of preparations, but now I'm ready. Now I want to start with the beef. And the beef, I'm not cooking it through and through. Uh, I want to marinate it and put it in the freezer when it's marinating. And that's where these amazing freezer bags come in. Because you all have been asking me about freezer bags. So I love these ones because the quality is fantastic. They last so long, by the way. And the good thing with them is that you can always reuse them. So I want to use four of them. So they are two. They come in two sizes. This one has this one has thirty bags, and then this one has forty bags. Okay, and you know, as always, I'm going to link them down below for those who are interested. So now, 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 I have never made this recipe before, but it's always a first time. I love trying out new things. Oh, actually, these ones are finished. So. What I want to do is, by the way, I want to bulk up my beef a lot because economy, I need to get the most out of my two kgs. So I'm going to divide it into four and then bulk it up with a lot of vegetables and then also marinate it with a nice sweet sauce of all this amalgamation of spices so that when it cooks, it will be fantastic, okay? So actually, I only need three bags because one is going into the pot, which is what we are having for dinner. Let's do this, guys. So one thing I normally have an issue with is putting potatoes in the freezer because sometimes they don't do so well. But what I want to do is I want to put them at the very bottom so that they'll be nicely covered by the stew and all the spices and that way they will last longer. I don't know, it's for trying and seeing. So, so far I've put in potatoes, celery, and carrots in all of them. I'm adding some red onion. And these bags, you guys, are so big. They're 3.7 liters. So, you'll fit in quite a bit of the stuff that we need to cook with. All right. And in goes, of course, our garlic and ginger paste because hello, come on. What is food without this? All right. So that's it. That's a good enough dish of beef stew. No, not yet, baby. Just hold on. So the liquids are going in. These are just the tomatoes, tomatoes, potato, potato that I have already blended. Okay, I feel like I want to add. In case you're wondering how this is going to look, don't worry. It's what we're having for dinner, so you'll see for yourself. First put in the bones, so that all the bones don't end up in one bag, you know? As the beef stays in the freezer, it's going to keep marinating and chucking all the juiciness. I 
I know the beef doesn't look nearly as much, but you guys, we are working with the economy and the way things are right now, okay? So what we get is what we get, man. The last thing I'm going to put is a little bit of sugar. I know people sometimes think that's crazy, but it helps to balance out all the acidity. Very kidogo, like one teaspoon or so. All right. And a bit of oil. Okay. Not necessary, but helpful. Just like that. I am done with one dish. So all I want to do is to mix it up nicely. So you can also write the date and the contents which is really important so that you know what is what. I forgot to do that, but I'm not so worried because the beef will be uh, standing out. But for the rest of the stuff that I'm going to put, especially the beans, since they look so similar, once they're cooked, I'll have to write, I'll show you guys. So just like that, one dish is ready which is one thing i really love about doing batch cooking this way which is putting the meals marinating them in the freezer bags because then the cooking takes me like a minute and i'm done with one meal so what i want to do is i want to put this on the pot to just simmer on its own when it comes from the freezer you don't need to add some water because it will have a bit of water but now since it hasn't been frozen i'll put just like a cup of water or stock today i have stock because i'm organized and then i'll let it just steam, simmer slowly as i cook the rest of the stuff but this one is ready for the freezer one down six to go if you love cooking if you love eating if you love cleaning you are in the right place if you have not subscribed to this channel please consider doing so we would so love to have you as this family and if you have already subscribed, you got all oh, my love. Thank you so much. Yes, and God bless you all. Subscribers and new soon to be subscribers. This beef slap. I know it doesn't look like it when I start cooking it at first, but you guys, let me tell you, I think, as I said, the key is in the simmering it for, for a long time. I, I, when I grow up, uh, one day I will have a slow cooker because this is technically a slow cooker or an instant pot meal. No, no, slow cooker. Instant pot will just pulverize those potatoes. But I cooked in a very low heat and the simmering, the long simmer, mm, fantastic. Please don't knock it till you try it. Try this beef stew and let me know.
some people wonder why even bother to batch cook why should i take this many hours of my day to cook enough food to last me either a week or two weeks or even a month and for me one of the best things i love about it is the way it saves time like it cuts off like two hours of my time every night cooking dinner for my family and i could always use an extra hour and if i had an extra hour this is how i like to use it i love to learn new things and skillshare is the best place for me where i go to learn fantastic new skills now this part of the video is kindly sponsored by skillshare and i'm always so grateful to you when you support me when i have sponsored content and now let me tell you a little bit more about skillshare Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes, you guys, for anyone who loves learning and wants to explore their creativity or to learn new skills. And in just one hour per day, you guys, I am learning fantastic, fantastic things that I'm I really literally just changing my life. For instance, let me tell you the class that I'm enjoying this month, all right? This month, I am learning about customer service and how to get better at sales because you all know how much i love business and how much i love selling and buying and side hustling and making an extra coin here and there and skillshare has really been helpful for me like the class i'm learning right now it's called customer service master class turn buyers into raving fans this class is by a gentleman known as brad merrill and let me tell you a little bit more about this class okay this class teaches me the customer service fundamentals just the things that i need to know about how why why should anyone buy from me okay foundations of exceptional customer service communication skills how to just protect my mental health because sometimes y'all let me tell you guys if people do not buy the stuff that i'm selling <laughs> i used to catch feelings not anymore because this class is really helping me with that and i'm going to put a screenshot of all this and remember the first 1000 people to put to use the link that I'm going to pin in the pinned comment down below, get one month free of Skillshare. So you can see for yourself, see the lessons that will change your life. Take a whole month to just explore the platform and see how much there is to learn. And you will thank me. If you're already using Skillshare, let me know, but let me know down below the classes that you're taking and how they are impacting your life. Because you guys, we are changing our lives with Skillshare. As I'm cooking the vegetarian dishes, I'm also I need to also fry my bacon and sausages because uh, I like to put them in as you will see. So now here is how I want to differentiate my lentils because I like them to taste just a little bit different because you've seen the base is all the same okay so for the for the butter beans I'm going to put 
a little bit of sausage. As you can see, I've roasted it and cut it into very small pieces just to give it a bit of a different flavor. Uh, for the beans, actually, I was going to put the bacon. Then I realized I forgot to buy more bacon. And the beans, they're quite a lot. Okay, so this won't make much of a difference. So I'm going to switch. So I'm going to use the bacon for the njahez. Okay, and then... Because I have these two cans of coconut cream, it's quite a bit. I'm going to use this for the regular normal red kidney beans, okay? So the white beans will be tasting a little bit of sausage. The beans will be tasting a little bit of coconut. And then jahe will have a bit of a bacon taste. How awesome is that? But one thing I want to do before I put the sausage here is, I've realized I've used a small pot. So I still have quite a bit left. So I need to switch this onto a bigger pot and then I'll put in the sausage. I've already put a bit of stock. Let it simmer for like 30 minutes and we'll be ready. I'm so excited to show you how we are going to store this cooked food in the bags because they take so much, so much less space as opposed to when I use those large, large containers and they're so much easier to handle. You wait, wait till the end and see how neat and nice it looks. One of the biggest problems I have with Njahez is that the soup or the stew never seems to get creamy enough. You know, the Njahez are just standing there in isolation. <laughs> They're not joined. So I want to grate a bit of potatoes. I found this is a great way to thicken your soup. And then I will just let them simmer and simmer and simmer and simmer and simmer and hopefully get a nice thick stew out, out of the Njahez. I am done with all my vegetarian dishes. <laughs> I thought I only had chicken and pork left. Totally forgot about the meatballs. So I want to start with that now. And then, once I'm done with the meatballs, I'm going to do the, the pork and then the chicken. And I'm done, 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 done. Now, <laughs> hey, I forgot that I needed eggs for the meatballs. So I don't have eggs. So, because Google is my friend, I realized I can always add some yogurt, or rather I learned from Google. And thankfully I had this yogurt that I had bought to make yogurt. We make yogurt here. If you're interested, I'm going to pin it somewhere here. But I haven't had the chance to make the yogurt yet, so I'm going to use this. Then we can always get more culture tomorrow. So, yeah, my oven is already preheating. I'm getting some water because I'm thirsty. And I want hot water because it's cold. My oven is preheating. Let me do this. Mix, mix, mix. Put them in the oven. Get on with the chicken and the pork and the wort and the wort and sleep at a good time. <laughs> Let me tell you guys, this whole idea of putting yogurt in the meatballs. It's a lie. Sister, it's a lie. Oh. Hey, wait and see. So now that I have the oven on, I have decided it's a good time to also roast some vegetables. 
And as, as I always say, I like to maximize it when my oven is on. Since it's going to take the same amount of energy, anyway, roasting the meatballs, I want to throw in these vegetables in there. And yeah, kill two birds with one stone. It's very easy, but I'm just going to pop them on the baking sheet, baking tray. And then just season them with a little bit of oil and salt and boom simple roasted vegetables are the best Sister, did I not tell you, eh? This is your gut. It's a lie. Don't put your gut in your meatball. It's a lie. If you don't have eggs, just forget about the whole meatball shenanigans, eh? Then just make mince, mince meat stew. Eh, meat is meat, eh? Nobody will ask. <laughs> the way these meatballs fell apart. <laughs> it was faster than the walls of Jericho, let me tell you. It just fell. It's like, just, I should have just made stew from the beginning. Eggs, eggs, and nothing but eggs for your meatballs. Don't believe any lie on the internet. Eh. So this chicken, I'm really just because I finally learned how to make, how to cut a whole chicken. Uh, if you haven't watched it, I actually showed this in my, just my previous uh, batch cooking video that I did last month. So check it out. So now I'm no longer scared of buying whole chickens because I'm an expert at chopping them up. And yes, I'm recycling the baking paper because I've run out and, you know, make do. Gotta do what you gotta do, man. For the teriyaki sauce, I'm basically mixing honey and soy sauce, uh, ginger and garlic sauce, and some balsamic vinegar, and some cornstarch to make it thick, alright? The recipe also calls for sesame seeds. seeds. I'm going to share this recipe. Uh, in the pinned comment down below but hey i had some nice roasted sesame seeds but when i went to get them out i realized some moth had decided to make it to their home so i had to toss them the recipe by the way says that i should not be pre-cooking this chicken but it also calls for small bite-sized chicken pieces these are not bite-sized so i decided to just cook because the last thing you want is to serve people raw chicken and deal with salmonella I'm done with the chicken. I am making such good progress. Like what? For my pork, I'm going to dry fry it. Find it's the only way to make pork. But I do want to do a one of these. It's a slow roast pork. Party pork. Pork. So I'm looking forward to that recipe. You stay tuned. But in the meantime, we keep dry frying it because it works. And you know, what's, what do they say? Why change? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. So this dry frying one is working so well for me. So I'm just going to boil it with a bit of um, rosemary. And then uh, chop up some onions and peppers. Fry them up nicely. And more rosemary because hello, hello. And then dry fry. Simple and the kalea. So I still have a bit more energy. So today I want to clean up. <laughs> By then, most times when I do batch cooking, and I'm, I'm normally so tired, I don't do it. But this time, I think uh, I'm, I have energy to spare. So, clean up, put away, wipe, just leave it. The place looking fantastic. You know, shine your sink, fly lady style, and all that jazz.
all my meals are done. Oh, I'm so just. Every time I look at all that I've managed to cook, and I'm like, yes, girl, you did it. Love it. So it's time for my freezer bags to shine. Yes, 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 yes. Ah, uh, by the way, most people use felt pens to write on them. Me, I don't know what kind of felt pens those people use because I tried my felt pens and they did not work. So I'm just using a ballpoint pen. Of course, very lightly. The good thing with these papers is that you write with, if you write with a normal ballpoint pen that everyone has in their home, it writes very well. Just don't go using all your energy, please, and poking holes, okay? I know y'all are strong women of God, but <laughs> don't use all your energy there. Just, just, just make it faint, but it, it will still be legible. Yeah, and of course, I want to recycle some old ones that I've had because, as I said, one thing I love about these freezer bags is that they are easy to recycle, and they last a long while. This box that I finished today, by the way, I've had it for like four months. Yeah, Oh my gosh, it's a thing of beauty. All these meals. I actually counted them 25 good meals for 25 good dinners. Not to count the one we ate. Okay, so it's 26. Oh, no, yes. 26. Yes, actually 26. So that's enough for the whole month of October. Give or take a few days for leftovers and boom. I hope you have enjoyed this video. I Tell me, let me know which one was your favorite favorite meal here that i made today which one you will be trying watch another video on this channel you guys there's so much to learn and i will see you over there bye